Well, Donald Trump has secured a historic mandate in the U.S. presidential elections. My colleague Shabindu Ghosh is in Washington, D.C. He scans through how prominent newspapers are covering Trump's return to power. We are in front of the U.S. Uh, Capitol. This is the legislative arm of the American government. Here, Donald Trump has uh, recorded a thumping win in the presidential elections. Republicans are also uh, taking control uh, as far as the Capitol is uh, concerned. Now, let's take a look at the manner in which the prominent newspapers talk about Trump's big win. We begin with the Washington Post. Uh, the headline on the front page reads, Dawn of a new Trump era. The big win may give license for radical changes to the leadership. Also, Kamala Harris uh, says that the fight that fueled her run is going to endure and she's going to fight for the values that she stood for. The front page, uh, another article piece talks about the banner in which most counties across the United States, it shows on a map, uh, urban, suburban and rural have swung uh, rightwards, uh, historic realignment of the electorate has taken place. Uh, it talks about uh, the manner in which uh, in key swing states uh, that decided the elections, uh, Trump also cut into the traditional democratic uh, strongholds, urban areas, high income uh, suburbs in Pennsylvania, black voters in uh, Wisconsin, uh, for example, and Arab voters in Michigan, just to say manner in which uh, Trump had a, a wider appeal across the electorate in the United States of America. Next paper we turn to is uh, the New York Times. Uh, in bold, the uh, headline reads, Trump storms back. He defeats Harris and caps his resurgence uh, from outcast to felon to president-elect. The picture of uh, Donald Trump uh, with his wife, Melania Trump, uh, on the election night at West Palm Beach, Florida. It says, impeached twice, convicted on 34 felony counts. Mr. Trump, the 45th president, is now poised to become the 47th uh, president. And uh, another article, an interesting one, as to what were the preferences of the voters. It reads, democracy fears lost out to everyday worries. It says the manner in which uh, Kamala Harris had appealed to the voters that it's a choice that they have. Uh, democracy, constitutional rights and bedrock freedoms, as opposed to Donald Trump's uh, chaos and division. Uh, but the voters of America have spoken. Uh, and the nation replied, the answer from more than half of the voters of the country seemed to be dismissing the warnings uh, against Mr. Trump, uh, that he was a threat to principles on which the country uh, has been founded. Abstract truths mattered less to the voters, it seems, than the tangible issues like ability to pay rent or concerns over illegal immigrations and border crossings. So we now turn to the Financial Times, uh, the big picture of uh, Donald Trump and Melania Trump on the front page. Uh, the headline is simple, says it all, Trump is back. It also goes on to talk about the economic implications of it. Uh, stocks open at uh, a record high amid global fears of tariffs, the tariff war that uh, Trump's uh, previous uh, tenure. An important uh, piece of trivia in the paper, at 78 years old, uh, Trump will be in January the oldest U.S. president to be sworn into the office. His running mate, though, 40 years old, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, is going to be one of the country's youngest vice presidents. Those were some of the highlights uh, in the newspapers as Trump wins the big elections in the U.S. with camera person Jay Shankar, Shubhendu Ghosh for DD India in Washington, D.C.